You want them to see everything that they need on your resume before their attention span runs out. That's a real thing. I am in the middle of going through a whole bunch of student resumes and I just wanted to make a really quick video explaining how to make an actor resume. You are making the resume so casting directors, agents, and managers know what you do and know what you have done. Okay, so it has to be clear. There is a very clear format when it comes to these resumes. Columns, yes, that is the best thing for a person to see when they look at your resume because casting directors are looking at them all day long. They do not have time to format their eyes to whatever format you've made up on your resume. Whatever it is that you're submitting for should be at the top. So even if you haven't done a lot of film and television, theater is a bigger component on your resume, you want that film and television to be first because that is what is applicable. Wait a minute, let's back up. My name is Giselle. I am an acting coach in New York City. I'm also an actor in the industry and have been for a while. I know what it feels like to be starting from scratch and starting this whole journey. And I just wanna help you make it a little bit easier. The first thing is your name, your first and last name at the very top. Now, this can be a little bit bigger when it comes to font than the rest of your resume because you do want it to stand out. Right underneath that, you're gonna have phone numbers and email addresses. Now, please, do not give us more than one phone number. If I'm looking at your resume and I see more than one phone number or more than one email address, I don't know which one to pick. Don't make me make any decisions. Give me the best number to contact you and the best email to contact you at. And if you have a website, put that there too. Later on, you might have to swap out your information for your agent's information, and at that time, they'll totally help you with that. Right under that should be your stats. If you are someone who's interested in modeling, here's the breakdown. Everything you see here should be on the top of your resume. Now there's no reason for you to label this measurements or stats. We look at resumes all the time. We know that these are your stats. We know they're your measurements. What you do wanna make sure is that you separate it by type. So you have your theater and you have your film and television. Now depending on what you're submitting for, you wanna make sure that is at the top. Now, I know a lot of you guys are just getting started, so the experience that you're writing down is from school plays or from church plays, and if you are not writing these things down, you need to have them on your resume. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but what you are telling them is you're saying, hey, I can be on stage in front of people and not puke, and that's great. Maybe you have a performance at church and you performed in front of your whole congregation, but there was no name for the show. You don't want to put Sunday performance. So if the show was about forgiveness and about the love that you have for other people, maybe you name it forgiveness letters. If on your resume you just have a name, Ashley, Rebecca, someone that you played, it doesn't help me know how you handle text. So you want to put down the size of the role. So that's a principal. Was it a lead role? Was it supporting? If you didn't really have a big part, you want to write the word ensemble. It shows us that you know the language that we're speaking. Now instead of putting St. Paul's Baptist Church in that third column, I want you to put the name of the stage. In most churches, someone has donated the stage. And so there's a name to the stage. Now, by no means am I telling you to lie on your resume. I would never tell you to do that. What I am saying is work with what you got. You do have experience. You just have to do your very best at making it look professional. Let's say you have a lot of experience that you don't know where to put. If you want, you can create something on your resume that says related experience and you can put all those catch things right underneath there. Be careful with that though. If you're just doing it to fill up space, leave it off. The training is a very important part because you wanna show them that you're constantly learning and if you don't have a lot of experience, you should have a lot of training. Now let's talk about how to format it. Keep it to two columns. What did you study? 
where was it? Now, when you are taking classes with casting directors and agents and managers, and let's say you're doing a workshop and you're meeting these people and you're getting one-on-one -on -one training with them, and it's longer than just one day, then in that case, you do wanna make sure in that column off to the right, instead of putting the workshop school that you went to, you can put the name of the casting director, agent, or manager that you studied under. If you don't wanna do the two columns because you're really interested in expressing what it is you learned at these different schools, that's fine. You can format it in a different way. You can put your school in bold, you can put where it was, and then underneath it, you can put what you learned. If you went to an acting program and you had, let's say, 15 classes, and four of the classes was on this, and four on this, and four on that, I would not specify exactly what you learned because you didn't dive deep in those areas. You had just enough to have a taste, and I think in those cases, you should just put that you had acting training. To the fun part, to the fun part, to the fun part, special skills. We know you have them, you're very special. Put them down in a way that makes sense. What does that mean, Miss Giselle? In New York City, having a driver's license is a special skill. Having a passport is a special skill, right? Then you wanna look at the things that you study, right? If you are a singer, singing is a special skill. Put your vocal part down there. I am a singer soprano. What types of dances can you do and what level are you? Are you intermediate? Are you advanced? Are you beginner? If you've taken gymnastics, you write that down. If you know how to ride a horse bareback, you write that down. Think about all of the movies that come out for young kids or for teens or even for adults that have special skills. That Gabby Douglas movie, everybody in that movie needed to have some sort of understanding over gymnastics and the actors who had a really good gymnastics background were more likely to get the part. If you end up having a lot of special skills, break it down, right? Categorize them. If you have a lot of different accents that you can do, maybe put accents and then list them. Languages, list the languages that you speak. Can I just say something about special skills? The last thing you wanna do is have something on your special skills that you cannot do. And you might be in an audition space or in front of an agent or manager and they go, oh great, you sing? Let me hear it. Oh, you can do a back handspring? Let me see it. Don't get caught up. This is not the place for you to share about your communication skills or for you to tell us that you won the spelling bee. Those are all great things. We don't need you to add them here. So you might have a lot of white space on your resume. It's okay, you're beginning, that's fine. And don't be afraid of it. There's no need for you to put any objectives or goals on your resume. You'll see a lot of people with a second headshot on the back of their resume. If you think it looks cool and it's something that you wanna do, go ahead, it's not mandatory. What I will say though, is if you're going to do that, make sure it's a picture that is distinctly different from the photo that's in the front. So guys, if you have a beard in the back but not a beard in the front, or girls, if you have curly hair in the front and straight hair in the back, now, if you're on the other side of that and you for some reason feel like you need two pages, you don't. Professionals in this industry all have one page. Once you start booking bigger and better roles, that's when you take off the stuff that's like community theater or church performances or school plays. That stuff you wanna get off your resume as soon as possible. Please don't get too fancy. I know we all have a good font. Keep it as simple as possible. Now don't be afraid of fonts either. You can do a nice font for your name, uh, but once you get into the body and the meat of your resume, you don't want anything too crazy. Please don't put your home address on your resume. You don't know where these are gonna end up at and you do not want someone to have your phone number, your email address, your home address, and your photo. No. You want to put commercial conflicts available upon request. Let's say you're in an audition for Spearmint Gum, but you've done a commercial for Trident Gum. Seeing that on your resume is just going to put a bad taste in their mouth and they're not going to want to call you in. You do not want to turn in a resume that is not the same size as your headshot. That just doesn't look professional, it looks tacky. So you want to make sure you staple four times around your resume, so top and bottom, and make sure the lines are very clean. We don't want anybody getting any paper cuts. 
And that way when you pass them your resume and your headshot, your headshot's on the front, resume is on the back. Look at that. Done. Oh. That was a lot. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't get it. I need to eat my stomach. Mmm. Mmm.